Hello. We are having a very casual day here today. I've been working at my desk all morning. So if I seem a little bit more placid than usual, I'm a little bit tired because I've done so much work this morning. I haven't done a plant video in a while and I think this will answer some of the questions that I get asked really regularly over in my DMs on Instagram. I'll put together a blog post too if you want to refer back to that and I'd also like to say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Now I don't do all my plant care on one day. I have my house sort of split up into areas. The lounge room and the dining room I consider one area and then the plant shelves and downstairs I consider the other area. The downstairs area of our house is a lot darker so we don't have as many plants down there so I'll do the shelves in the kitchen and I'll do all the downstairs plants on the same day. Imagine it like a three-day rotating roster. So like day one would be lounge room and dining room plants. Day two would be the shelf plants and downstairs. And then day three is nothing. This does change a bit in the summertime. So I might have to loop back and make another video because my plants are noticeably thirstier in summer. But now it's winter. It's pretty casual. I don't have to be too stressed about making sure that they're watered like exactly on time um, because I find winter months is when they tend to stay more damp for longer. Also, please bear with me. We are halfway through changing up the house a little bit and I feel, oh, I didn't wanna, I was like, oh, I don't wanna film when it's like halfway between, but it's a filming day today. So that's what we're doing. So the decor isn't going to stay like this. It's currently in a temporary space um, hopefully it will be how I want it within the next like couple of months. This is our old coffee table temporarily there, don't mind that. I took the shelves that were here and I put them down as storage in the garage and this will be different soon. So basically what I'm gonna do is just go around, I'm gonna see what needs watering and while I'm at it, I'm gonna go into the plants and I'm just gonna chop off any of the dead pieces or anything. Uh, the dead stuff, I usually just compost because well, it can be composted. This begonia was growing in the shelves that I recently moved and it got a little bit like pressed, like squished down. If you guys have a preferred method that you like to get them to grow, please share it with me in the comments. I know I get DMs sometimes from people asking, do the rabbits eat the plants? Pancake, which is this rabbit, he doesn't, he's totally good. Sometimes Ralph likes to nibble on a few and it's not all the time. I'm trying to figure out what his trigger is for that. I think it's when he's not getting the attention that he wants. And they are litter trained. We have three different litter boxes in the house. So two upstairs and one downstairs. And then we have fresh hay here for them all the time. This is the smallest litter box. The other ones are bigger so they can do like full turnarounds in them and everything. Anyway, this is meant to be a plant video, not a rabbit video. Mostly just old flowers on this one. This big devil's ivy has had a couple of um, random leaves die. They're not dying in any particular order. I'm not sure if they're just old, but there's also a lot of new growth on it, but I think it really needs the soil mix changed. I'm gonna check what needs watering is, I'm just gonna go along and sort of stick my hand in the soil. If it's just a really old leaf or a flower which has died, I'm not too fast at all. I'd only start to really be concerned if there was like newer leaves dying. While I'm doing this and just checking who needs to be watered and like chopping the leaves and stuff, I'm also just gonna be checking for pests. We got this new rug and all the animals are obsessed with it. I just went to step over here and he's lying there like this. Just so content. You don't have to check for pests every single time you water, but it's good to do it at least every second week, I think. Um, so some hot spots that I really notice along the stems of plants or especially alocasias seem to attract spider mites like crazy. So make sure you're checking under the leaves. If your eyesight is not the best, I would recommend doing this with maybe a magnifying glass and try to do it in bright light as well.
Now, this is the fertilizer that I like to use. And if I'm not using that, I'll use diluted worm tea from my worm farm. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is take some of the nursery plant pots, not all of them, and they're gonna get watered bottom up. So I know the alocasias tend to prefer this. The non-aesthetic bucket makes a return. So I'll put some here and then I'm gonna put some in the sink as well. A lot of my plants are in really big pots and so I can't move them to water them anymore. Like that would be a nightmare. That, I can't even tell you how much that weighs, but I'm guessing it's over 60 kilos. Like it's just hard to move. So we just water them where they are. Something I've started doing just to make the whole process a bit faster is actually cycling between two different watering cans. So I'll be watering with one um, while the other one is refilling. And I find that saves me a lot of time. This guy was in my plant cabinet, but I recently decided to take it out just because it was getting a bit too tall. Um, and there's some already some other big plants in the taller spaces. And I wanted to see how it would do out and about because I think it's really pretty. Like it's one of my favorite looking plants. And I really wanted it in a space where I could see it all the time. I missed this one before. Never ever happy in winter. But there's new growth, which is good. I might be out of focus because the plants are in focus. These ones aren't staying here. I just put them here because they were on the shelves which were in this window area. And I'm gonna keep them set up in this window area but not on this trolley thing. This is just our old coffee table and it's just here for the moment. I do have a mixture of ceramic and plastic and terracotta. Can you see that? I water just until the water is running out the bottom of the terracotta. And then what I'll do is after I'm finished watering everything, I'm gonna come back later and I'm just gonna tip out the basins of these because I don't want water just sitting around the whole time. Oh, that one at the back is super dry. This is my favorite corner. I don't know what I would do if this corner got pest infected. I didn't know where to put this bit because I don't repot anything in winter. That's just personal choice is what I've noticed works best for me and the plants that I have and where I live. My general rule of thumb is if you've had a plant for like, you know, less than 18 months, it doesn't really need repotting unless the roots have gone absolutely bananas. But I've found oftentimes, unless the plant is absolutely ready to be upsized, repotting can stress it more than anything else. And you end up with like brown leaves and like wilting and leaf drop and all that kind of thing. So I tend to wait until they really need to go. Like that pothos that I showed you earlier, as soon as it's spring, that guy's getting a new pot. Uh, the root system has taken off. I wanna get, put it in a mix that's more bark. I actually got it off my friend Anna when she moved back to New Zealand and it's in a very like mossy, like a peat moss kind of mix. And that's not what I usually like to use. I actually had two separate DMs on Instagram today asking me what soil I use. And I don't use just like a generic bagged soil. I just make my own blends depending on what the plant needs. I do have a blog post about this that I mentioned this in. So I'll link it, but just like short hand off the cuff kind of thing. I like to use a mix of like orchid bark and potting mix and perlite, sometimes some compost. I feel like I'm forgetting other things, but my brain is melting this afternoon. So I'll leave the blog post linked if you want to check it out. Mitch is trying to convince me to get another rabbit. He has blue eyes and he needs a home. Oh dear. 
He's gorgeous, but he looks hard to groom. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to clean the plant leaves. And the reason that I like to do this is, you know, it stops dust from settling on the leaves. They can photosynthesize better. They look healthier and it can also stop pest infestations. So there's three different things that I like to use for this. I'll either just use like warm water with a Castile soap in it, or I like to spray my plants with Yates white oil. And another thing that I like to use is this foliage spray. So the, another reason I didn't um, fertilize today is because I wanna use this foliage spray. So it's by Munash Organic. And it already has a few different minerals in it. So I didn't wanna overload the plants with too much stuff today. So this one has nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, calcium, magnesium, and sodium. I haven't used this spray in about two months. So I'm gonna use this one today. What I use the most is just like water and a damp cloth. And then sometimes I use the white oil. The reason I don't use the same thing every time is I don't want like a buildup because this could potentially lead to like a mineral buildup on the plant leaves. This could lead to like a waxy buildup. Water can't really lead to any buildup, so you're safe with that one. Now the last thing on my to-do list for today is to actually clean out my plant cabinet. You need to make sure there's no mineral buildup on the outside of the plants or on the inside of the cabinet. And I like to just go through and dust it because you know, there's soil in there, it can get a little bit dirty. A few of my plants have actually outgrown the cabinet now and I haven't bought any new plants in six or seven months, something like that now, just because I have enough. And whenever they grow and I have to trim them back, I end up propagating and then we end up with more. And there's so many, I've even been giving some away. Now I did put together a blog post if you want to refer back to anything, if you want to read over anything. I'll also leave some links as well for little tools and things that I like to use. I'll link some of the soil mixes and everything like that. I did want to say a little thank you to Squarespace again for partnering with me on today's video. They are actually my website host and they have been for over six years now. So Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform and I use them for not only my fitness blog eat run lift but also my personal journal which if you click on any of the links in the description box that's where you'll go today Squarespace allows you the easiest way to showcase your brand or your band portfolio or whatever else it is that you want to share with the world and they have an amazing 24 7 customer service team and the most streamlined blogging capabilities I've ever used also have in-depth analytics so you know exactly what people want to see on your website and where your traffic is coming from and it gives you a really good idea of what you need to do to grow your presence it's really simple to create a website which represents your brand and they have these plug and play templates which you can customize they're extremely professional looking they're so sleek and well designed and you have the ability to edit them if you like with custom coding if you'd like to start a free trial with Squarespace today you can see exactly why they're my choice of web host and as soon as you're ready to hit publish you can use the link in the description box or the link I've got on the screen and that will take 10% off your first purchase thanks for hanging out with me today uh, it's a very uh, tired sleepy afternoon for me there's that project that I've been working on and I've got a bit more to go there might be a couple of weeks coming up where I do have to skip and upload just because I want to put all of my focus into the project that I'm working on but hopefully it's just a week or two and then I'll just be straight back to my normal upload schedule I'm sorry if my hair got caught on my mic I only just realized it's getting to that annoying length now and it doesn't help that I'm wearing like a high neck top hope you're well and I hope you're looking after yourself and I'll catch up with you again soon bye